What's going on guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Kojo Joey. Today's video, unfortunately, I didn't create a behind the scenes video for this particular shoot. I think the makeup artist took behind the scenes video with her phone. I'll try and get them so that I can incorporate it in today's video just so that you know um, how the experience was. But all the same, I don't have a behind the scenes video myself professionally. So I, but I actually took a behind the scenes photo for my website my studio website i'm going to link it down in the description below so for all those who are in ghana or for those coming to ghana who want to book a studio space um you can just book a studio space by visiting my website and letting me know that you want to use my studio space there are different pictures showing you how the studio looks like but that's by the way that's shamelessly plugging myself i want to explain how this shot was achieved i mean the images you've seen me post on instagram Right. I want to show you how they were achieved by using this behind the scenes to explain a couple of things here. So let me just create a new layer, right, so that I can use that to explain what I did. All right. So this shoot is a four light shoot with canvas backdrops, and the whole inspiration from for the shoots. Well, we didn't start from here. We started by using canvas even as the cover up and all then i remembered i had some scarves lying around and i realized oh hey i can create amazing portraits using the scarves like lying around and for i had i had one comment where someone was like what's an open session i mean i posted an open session with the model so what an open-minded session was the open-minded session was the fact that she was comfortable showing a lot of skin i mean we went deeper but this is what i mean appropriate for the under 18 people all right that's fine that's fine that's by the way my name is kujuji and welcome back to my youtube channel make sure you subscribe before you leave turn on the bell notification icon for any other time i drop a video just so that you get notified and leave a like which will probably help me a long way so let's just get into today's video right the choice of colors was based on how i can you know make the tones on, of the skin look deep and rich and how i can contrast that with the subject with respect to the outfit she was wearing so that's why i have a green canvas back here and i have a brown canvas back here and this is um, a yellow canvas which is lying on the ground to serve us you know to fill the ground so that we can see these annoying tiles that are not really cool in my studio but all the same all the same i have a lot of canvases lying around and i realized oh hey i can create um, a set using a canvas i just need to buy more props as it is so i held this canvas backdrop using light stands i bought from one of the stores here in ghana and i held this particular brown canvas with my c stand as you can see over here so this c stand over here is helping hold this particular light stand so what i did was to use a handle together with um, a longer I think a longer tube or something so and i place it in the c stand so that it can go into the green stand we have over here so this green canvas is on two canvas um, two um, backdrop stands right and this is just supported this brown canvas is just supported with this particular c stand the downside to this is the canvases were very very heavy so i had to put a lot of weight on the c stand to have that effect so if, if you have um, lighter canvases, probably work and you wouldn't have that problem where I faced, where I had to struggle to fix that. I mean, I always envy the people who are able to join three or four or five canvases together to, you know, provide a particular set of shoots. But for the limited resources I have, this is what I could come up with. Now, this shoot, as you're seeing here, the available lights you can see in the image are one and two and three. Right. This is a 7 feet parabolic, 7 feet reverse umbrella, right, which is 185 centimeters. So the light used for this was the Gordox DP600 Mark III. So this Gordox DP600 Mark III is a studio monostrobe and it's plugged it's not um unplugged like the ad 600 so i bought that just because i know i won't be moving it around shooting outdoors with it and it's just a studio strobe i want to use in the studio so i appreciate the fact that it's a studio strobe i mean it's good it's good for whatever i want to use it for and it's quite cheaper also so this dp 600 has been modified by this seven feet reverse umbrella and the inner lining is a silver inner lining right so that's that and this is a 30 by 60 centimeter strip box 
right and what it's modifying is the ad 100 pro that's the light in this particular strip box so let's keep that in mind and it's the same strip box over here the 30 by 60 centimeter strip box but this particular light the strip box is uh, modifying the v860 mark ii speed light right so that's what we have here in this particular modifier the ad100 in this particular modifier and the third light is the dp600 what we all don't see in this particular one is the light casting this gobo onto the background right and one might be wondering where that light is so that light is, a, is my ad600 bm which has been modified by the gopro i mean sorry the gobo device the gobo device i think i got it from a friend i'll make sure to check it out and try and put the link down in the description just so that i can go buy it yourself if you are ever interested in using gobos all right so that's how i ended up using the gobo so the light is somewhere here all right i can find you can find it somewhere in there so i'll make sure to see if the makeup artist took a video of how the setup was and if i have it i'll put it in the video but if i don't have it sorry so that is that for the light i used so the gobo had an ad had an ad 600 right this strip box over here has the va 16 mark ii flash this particular strip box over here has um the ad 100 pro and the lights over here the seven feet reverse umbrella has my dp 600 so these are the lights i used for the shoot now let's explain something real quick so with respect to um, lighting what the strip box was doing was to you know wrap my subject around the head right and the idea of the grid there is to just restrict the light so that i don't get spill of light from the strip box on top over here so it was just lighting the shoulders if i zoom in and turn off this you realize the shoulders were lit properly and since this calf was a white calf you obviously won't see that happening because it was just bounce of the light right that's one good thing about white surfaces so you, see, you only see the wrapping on the shoulder region and over here as, as you can see so that's where that's what the strip box was doing this particular strip box you can see for one side of it i graded it for the other side it was bare open so this bare open side was lighting or filling in my shadows as you can also see around the chin area and the hand region it was filling or opening up my shadows for me the grid here is to restrict the light from hitting the ground that is not what i wanted the only light i wanted hitting the ground was my main or my key light that is what the grid was doing the gobo which is coming in from this direction sorry the gobo which was coming in from this direction was lighting the background for me i directed the gobo onto the background just so that i can have this over here as you can see then my main key light as you can see my main key light was lighting up the whole image even a little bit of the background and also more on the background on the floor the canvas on the floor this is more of um should i say rembrandt loop so i added no rembrandt overhead so i added both um my light this these two lights and patterns rembrandt Rembrandt in a sense that it was uh, more or I won't say Rembrandt, I say loop, loop together with um how should I put this? Loop together with overhead or paramount lighting. In the sense that I moved the light source all the way to 45 degrees angle to camera right. right? The camera was in this direction. Right? 45 degrees to camera right and how i modify the light i i i mean i bent it over towards the head so as you can see instead of me having this having the modifier this way the modifier is bent a little way this way in this direction so that's why i say the paramount and loop in 
a kind of way because at the end of the day i got um the shadows formed underneath the nose and i also had a little bit of rembrandt on the side of the cheek over here i hope that is well explained so that is where all this came from that is how i was able to achieve the shots i was i'm about to explain to you and i'll obviously take you through what i did it's, so it's more like an overview of the edits i did with respect to um, this image i shot using my canon 5d mark 4 and a sigma at h5 1.4 lens so i'll quickly explain something soon um what else what else do i need to explain over here so that is that for how i achieved this image now the available or the the settings for the lights that were used i think this one was the dp600 was at the dp600 was at 1 over 32 1 over 32 this ad 100 pro was at 1 over 64 sorry 1 over 16 the v860 mark 2 was also a 1 over 16 and the gobo the lights coming in from the gobo was at 1 over 8 the reason why it was at 1 over 8 was because you are restricting the light into a pinpointed source so and um, the kind of gobo that was used the device that was used um, has a lens on it you can magnify and you can you know demagnify to either increase your light source or reduce your light source so it usually takes away a lot of intensity from the light and i wanted to see it on the background so that is why i have that at one over eight the reason why i have this at one over 16 and that at one over 16 is because the dp600 the wattage on the dp600 is quite more powerful than these two so even at one over 32 it's obviously more powerful than this at one the ad100 at one over 16 and also the v860 at one over 16. so that is that that is what happened in the studio that is what um that is how i got to shoot this particular image so let's just jump right into capture one so i can show you whatever it is i did in capture one so i did high speed sync in the studio i mentioned i used, I used my canon 5d mark 4 the sigma at h5 1.4 lens and this is what i did so i made sure and fortunately for me all the lights i used in the studio all support high speed sync right and if they support high speed sync i am able to increase my shutter speed just so that i'll be able to get a different kind of feel to my image i was shooting a 1.4 so that means i'm going to allow more light to enter my lens and for me to be able to you know minimize the amount of light entering my lens i would have to increase my shutter speed so hence a shutter speed of 1 over 250 and an iso 1 over 125 i want to quickly show you the difference between shooting at high speed sync and shooting at your normal um let me yeah at the normal at the normal um you know shooting a high speed sync which is this and not shooting a high speed sync so this is the feel you will get by not shooting a high speed sync and the moment you introduce a high speed sync you then realize there's a warm feel to the image so it usually takes everything in the room and or in your studio space with respect to color casting then it adds to the image to give you the kind of look you're looking out for so what i did in my basic adjustment i'm using capture one two, two, two. i have the adjustments over here i increase my contrast reduce the saturation i'll quickly show you a before and after right this is for the exposure tab this is what i did in the exposure tab right so this is the before let me show you this is the before right and let me quickly open the after so this is what i did the exposure tab this was happening in the exposure tab reduce reduce my saturation open up my contrast reduce my highlights and open up the shadows a tad bit and so that's what the high dynamic range is doing right by opening up the shadows reducing the highlights i want to bring back some details in the white scarf and this is what happened in the levels the levels i increased my white by dragging it from here to here 
and i added a bit of blacks into this so this is what happened with the levels the levels is what brought that kind of contrast i was looking for in this particular image when you come into the curves i didn't do anything the rgb i actually wanted to add more contrast but without color so i did a slight s curve here in my luma curve adjustment and that is what happened and i added a bit of clarity so by plus 15 natural clarity to give it uh, some punch to the said image and here in my color tab i think i have faced an issue where people keep on asking me how to fix the canon reds in their image if you're using capture one which is very very easy just update your capture one to say capture one 20 pro or 2021 or even the latest one which is 2022 whenever you come into capture one and you want to fix that canon red problem make sure you have your base characteristics um tab here go into the icc profile and change it from by default it will be on generic right so by putting this on generic take a look at how the images if you don't want to face that red problem just change it to pro standard so this is a generic and this is a pro standard and that's what and that's how you can fix that issue with respect to um, you know the reddish problem on your images in capture one with, with respect to canon images to be precise so here my color editor in my basic tab this is what i did with my yellows i pushed it into the reds and i desaturated it because of this and i lit it up a little bit then in the greens i pushed the greens more towards the um, greenish hue the bluish the bluish greenish hue just so that my greens could stand out and increase the saturation a tad bit and reduce the lightness um let me quickly show you before and after the reason why i'm getting this hue of green is because of the color cast on the green from the yellows in the image and the browns in the image so it will give it um, a more warm tone and that's not what i am looking out for that's why i did what i did here let's see that's of the cyan i mean this cyan was because of the other canvas backdrop i used in the image and this was to remove the blues because this white was giving off a blue hue any white material if the material is not true tone probably gives off blue hint or blue tint blue magenta and purple that's when white light hits a white surface so i tend to remove all those colors from the white surface because i just need the white to look pure white for me and here in my color balance what i did in the color balance was to reduce the luminosity of the midtones and warm up my shadows and my highlights i did that because i needed a certain tone on the skin so this is before that and this is after that so after applying all whatever it is i did in the adjustments and here in the color editor and all that this is the only way i can bring back that tone i'm looking for on the skin i realized this wasn't enough so i added another adjustment layer doing the same thing but this time around i cooled down my shadows warmed up my midtones and cooled down my highlights and equally reduced the luminosity on the skin with respect to the midtones so this is what's happening in there as you can see and i added the same thing over again so i doubled that effect and that is how i was able to achieve this look here in capture one so right from capture one i'm able to do all these just so that when i go into photoshop i'll be able to you know um, restrict myself from doing a lot but unfortunately i did a lot in photoshop with respect to the skin i wanted it to go into a particular direction i was looking at so yeah so this is the before and after before capture one and after capture one that is the effect i had here so i'll send this into photoshop and let's enter into photoshop and let's go through whatever it is i did here in photoshop so in photoshop i needed to remove these and expand it because um i shot this using my mac 4 like i said the crop or the framing at which i shot this if i'm to post this on instagram the crop that will happen will probably cut off majority of the gobo and i wanted you able to feel the full essence of what the gobo was doing so initially i started off without um cropping in on the image to fill or 
opening up the image to fill just so that it fills in that 4x5 crop frame. So I did the healing by removing the annoying things in there. I used um, the healing brush tool together with the patch tool and also the clone stamp tool to do that job. Right? And the next thing I did was to expand the frame. Right? And you do that by using your crop tool. So you hold C on the keyboard and because Instagram is a 4x5 crop, the moment you input in the 4x5 crop, it gives you the crop. And what you need to do after that is to, you know, make sure the layer you're on, you check on content away. That is if you have enough spaces around to create that 4x5 filling, right? And if you check on the content away, it will fill in like this. Sometimes there's a repetition, sometimes there's not. So with the repetition, I mean, you can take your clone stamp tool and try and reduce the repetition or repetition of patterns with respect to the kind of background you're using, right? So that is that. I did a little bit of frequent separation on the skin. So this is before and after. I mean, I didn't do it here. I think I remember doing it on the leg. The leg was kind of giving me issues the dark tones i didn't want to use dodging and burning to do that because it will you know push out more saturation and i didn't want to use also here and saturation to do a lot of job i mean like i said i did a lot here so this is me using the frequency separation to tone down the legs because it had hair on it then you can see on the background also i used it to reduce um the kind of texture i was seeing right I've seen people use frequent separation to iron out clothes and also I use that to iron out the background just so that it looks the way I want it to look. Now let's go into the color grading. Okay, so I start by fixing the eye. As you can see over here, right? I fix that issue, healing and all, removing all the blemishes I need to remove. And then I make sure this looks more white and I use the hue and saturation layer for that and I'll have to go within my reds and I reduce the saturation in my reds and I painted I hand painted it with my brush tool then this skin tone I wanted an even skin tone throughout the image so um, a solid color adjustment right so this is a solid color adjustment made sure I pick a particular skin tone and the skin I needed then I applied it all over her skin by using a blending mode of soft light, opacity of 50. I have an even tone all over her skin, which in turn increases the saturation for me in, um, um, with respect to the reds. Right? So that's where this is coming from. Then I used my Choco Toning Lux, which I'm still selling, to even darken the skin more. And by darkening the skin more, you realize that the white now becomes more prominent and the image or the, yeah, the subject now looks a bit darker. I mean, that's the idea I'm going for. Then I remove the reds a little bit because it looks too much by using selective coloring. If I don't want reds, I'll just add cyan, right? So I just added cyan using the selective coloring. Then what I did was to reduce the lightness on the background from the brown side because this is where the key light was right so obviously the spill will be more as compared to that of the green so just to reduce the lights so that i have an even spread of light then i changed the hue of the scarf because this is not what i saw when i was shooting i used the selective i sorry i use a selection tool to select the skirt then i use a hue and saturation with the colorize option over here and when i click on the colorize i'm able to add color i think i've thought how to change colors of outfits in photoshop it's on my youtube channel then i even whiten the scarf the more right so if i zoom in you can see before and this is the after you see it even whitens the more so before it still had some blues in it or whatever color cast that was on the white scarf and I removed it by using the hue and saturation layer adjustments and just reducing the saturation of the master. Then last but not least, I added some blues into my blacks. Right? So the opposite of yellow is blue. I added some blues into my blacks. And that was that for the overall color grading. And the next thing I did was to quickly dodge and bend. I dodge and bend the background and the skin 
just to give me the kind of look I was going in for. So like I said, I used the frequency separation to just fix the leg. And you know what's funny? I actually did the dodging and bend. Realized I didn't want to expose the leg so much. So I did the frequency separation before, I mean, after I finished the dodging and bending. And that gave me the look I was going in out for. So looking at her skin, this is before the dodge and bend. And this is after the dodge and bend. Just to fix or make sure the tones on the skin are evened out. Right. I do color grading before dodging and bending because let's assume with respect to say the lat I was using, this lat actually darkens down the skin. Am I right? And if it darkens down, obviously it's affecting the luminosity on the skin. So if for whatever reason I do the color grading after the dodging and bending, I'm also going to affect my luminosity and hence will probably give me a problem where I have to come and dodge and bend again to fix that transition between those two luminosities I'm fixing. The next thing I have in I have here is to add another dodge and bend, but this time around I was using a global dodge and bend method to highlight and contour certain parts. So if I zoom in, let's see, before and after. So this was to highlight and contour the skin to bring out that 3D dimension. The next thing I did was to sharpen the scarf and I mean the two scarves over here and her eye then add a tap bit of noise to make it a little bit original right or organic sorry so mostly to make something organic to make something feel like it was shot on a film you add noise to your image then a little bit of vignetting yeah so to create a vignetting all you need to do is create a new layer make sure your blending mode is on soft light pick up the gradient to pick the radial filter, make sure it's on reverse. Pick any opacity you want, then drag from wherever you want to drag from. If you want the vignette to start from the face, you can drag from the face. But because she's centered, I'll drag it from somewhere here. And also make sure this the black is on your foreground, not the white. I drag it, then increase the vignette for me. Then for whatever reason, I'll reduce the opacity. And that's how you create your vignetting tab or layer. And that's what I did for this image. I saved it, came back into Capture One, and there we have it here in Capture One. Resize the crop, and that was it. And that's how I was able to produce this particular image, which I used the same method to also edit this other one over here. So these are the two images I posted on Instagram and the kind of support and love I'm getting from you guys. I decided to just do this. I mean, I've not done this form of explanation of the behind the scenes. I usually provide a video. But unfortunately, like I said, I didn't have a video camera at that particular moment. So I just, you know, did this particular one for you just so that you guys can enjoy it. The reason for the 1.4 was to create a separation, create that, um, I don't know, how should I put this? That soft feel to the image right and that's that so i was inspired to do this i mean this wasn't the original shoot the original shoot i think you guys should check my website i posted the original picture over there this was at the latter part of the shoot where we ended up creating different stuff because i had these scarves lying around thank you so much for watching today's video i hope this was educative enough i hope it wasn't just a before and after what i was doing i quickly explained exactly what i did in the image i hope you enjoyed it i hope it was educative for you i hope you share it to other people to also you know learn a thing or two about um how to edit how to shoot images like this even using gobo how to even shoot high speed sync in the studio thank you so much and maybe in the future i'll produce like an appropriate video on how to you know shoot high speed sync in the video uh, did i say high speed sync in the video how to shoot high speed sync in the studio with the kind of lights you have right thank you so much and i'll see you in my next video peace